garden to table. Let's whip up a homemade spaghetti sauce with fresh garden tomatoes and talk a little bit about prepping with pasta. Hey guys, it's Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to our channel. We are so glad to have you here. Make sure you're subscribed and ring that notification bell if you haven't already so you don't miss any of our uploads. Today I'm going to take you along and show you how I made and canned uh, my homemade spaghetti sauce this year. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while. We do use a lot of spaghetti sauce. It's something that all the kids like. Everyone in the household will eat spaghetti. It's an easy way and a cheap way to feed everyone. I mean, who doesn't love pasta? And pasta is a great thing to include in your prepper pantry because number one, it's very inexpensive. You can get a pound of pasta for less than a dollar just about anywhere. It stores really well. I have stored large amounts of pasta for a long period of time and I don't do anything special with my pasta. I don't repackage it. I don't, you know, do anything. I just leave it in the package it came in and knock on wood. So far, I've never had an issue. I haven't had anything go bad. I haven't had anything go rancid. I haven't had any issues with bugs. So it is a really great thing to store. Now, if you're going to have pasta in your prepper pantry, you're going to want to make sure that you have got it. And if you need more, get it now because they are talking about shortages of pasta. We had um, problems with the grain crop. It's weather related, climate related, the high temperatures and drought has really done a number on the wheat crop. So pasta is gonna be in short supply and more expensive when you can find it. So I know there's a lot of places where people are already reporting having a hard time finding pasta in their stores. So if you eat pasta and you love pasta, make sure you're throwing an extra pack or two into the grocery cart whenever you see it so that you can build up your supply. So another reason that I really wanted to make the pasta sauce is because we're working on being a lot more self-sufficient. It's an important part of preparedness. Being prepared is not just about buying things. It's also about learning skills and making sure that you know how to do things on your own. Know how to do things without the grocery store. Do you know how to make your own pasta sauce? Do you know how to make your own bread? Do you know how to grow your own vegetables? Do you know how to preserve them? That's all very, very important. And it's things that need practice. They're not things you're going to develop overnight. They say the more skills you have, the less things you need. So last year I wanted to make spaghetti sauce with the tomatoes from the garden, but all the recipes that I could find wanted to use a strainer to remove the seeds and the skin. I didn't have anything to do that with, so I just gave up and made salsa, which is okay because we use a lot of salsa also. But this year I really wanted to get the pasta sauce done. So I did some more research and I found a lot of people who do the pasta sauce without removing the skin and the seeds. And I decided that's what I was going to do. So I took a recipe that someone posted on one of my canning groups and I combined it with another recipe that I use sometimes for a pasta dish with a homemade sauce. And I came up with something that I thought was going to be really good. And guess what? It was really good. This is a very kid friendly sauce. It's very smooth. It's all pureed with no chunks. It's something I knew my kids would like, which was important to me. You know, they like Prego and that kind of stuff basic. They don't like anything very gourmet. I wanted something that the whole family would eat and that's what we ended up with. It was a pretty messy process. I got to tell you, if you're one of those OCD people who does not like messes, you may have to look away. I'm a messy cook and I'm not very graceful with the immersion blender. So it was a pretty messy process making this sauce, but we ended up with a really delicious sauce that everyone was very happy with. I'm very happy with. We did it in two separate batches. Um, we used about, I think about 20 pounds of tomatoes each time. And the first time we got, my canner holds seven quarts. So the first time I was able to can seven quarts and had one quart left over that we just refrigerated and used. And then the second time I was able to can seven quarts and have two quarts left over that we used um, for dinner that week. So I was able to make about um, 15, 15, 16 quarts. 15, 15, 16, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 17 quarts. So altogether, I was able to get about 17 quarts of homemade spaghetti sauce and 14 of those went into our pantry. So I was really happy with that. So let's go and I'll show you how I did it. So what I've done first is just taken a whole bunch of tomatoes from the garden. These are a mixture of tomatoes. We've got grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. We've got um, paste tomatoes. I've got several different brandy wines, pink, black, um, so I basically just cored and quartered the large tomatoes and the grape and cherry tomatoes are just left whole. I didn't do anything to them except make sure they didn't have a stem. And these, um, I didn't take the skins off or anything. I've got my oven set 
to 425 degrees. Now I've got some fresh garlic here. This is about one whole bulb of fresh garlic and I am just going to roughly chop it. That's pretty good. Go ahead and get that garlic right in the pan. Now I've got some fresh basil from the garden that I've just kind of stacked and rolled. Go ahead and just cut this into strips. We'll go ahead and sprinkle that right on top. And the last time I did this, I had drizzled some oil over this, and I found that I didn't really even have to do that because I roasted several batches without any oil and they were perfectly fine. So we're just going to go ahead and stick this right in the 425 degree oven. It's getting all nice and roasty. So I'm just going to give that a little toss. And it get a little softer before we try to blend it up. And here we've got our final batch of tomatoes all done roasting. Now I'm just going to use my immersion blender to blend these up. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended because we'll be blending it some more once we put it in the stock pot. Now we are going to pour this into our biggest stock pot. Makes quite a mess. And then once we've got it in the stock pot, we're just going to simmer it and we can keep on blending it with our immersion blender until it's as smooth as we want it. what I've got is I've got a half a cup of cooking oil here. Now I'm just using um, canola oil but you could use olive oil also. And then I have got, this is two large bell peppers, no sorry, four large bell peppers and two large onions. Now I've got all green bell peppers today but you could also use different colors. I think last time I had some red and orange. So I'm just going to get this in the oil and start cooking it until it's soft. It's actually going to fill that pan pretty full, but that's okay. Now you can see this has cooked down quite a bit and gotten pretty soft. Now once it's soft enough, we should be able to blend it up with our immersion blender just like we did the tomatoes. Once again, we don't have to get this completely smooth because we're going to keep blending it when we add it to the stock pot. We're going to go ahead and add this to our big stock pot with our tomato sauce. So the next thing going into the pot now that we've added the pureed veggies in with the tomatoes is a half a cup of sugar. a quarter cup of salt, this has three tablespoons of Italian seasoning, two tablespoons of beef bouillon, and one tablespoon of black pepper. So our final ingredient tonight is 12 ounces of tomato paste. We're going to first put it right back into the pan that we had our veggies in and uh, brown it, kind of cook it in a little bit of oil for a little bit. I'm going to keep this burner nice and low. 
so we can cook this down without burning it. So now that we've let this cook low and slow for a while and caramelize a little bit, we're going to go ahead and add this to our sauce and mix it in real well and give it a few more spins with the immersion blender. Our sauce is pretty thick already, but this will help thicken it up for the final product. And you see our sauce here. We've been simmering this for a while and I've been blending it with my immersion blender to get it smooth. All right, so now we have got our clean hot jars and our sauce is all ready to go. Pass the taste test. Of course, you can adjust your seasonings however you like. So now we're going to jar this up and get ready to pressure can it. We're going to be leaving one inch of headspace. I just love how nice and smooth this sauce is. Kids love it. It's very kid friendly. Of course now we've got our little bit of white vinegar that we can use to wipe the rims of these jars. Make sure there's no sauce left on them so that we can get a good seal. Okay. We'll get the rest of these ready to go in the canner. Alright guys, that's basically how I did it. Like I said, for one batch we started with about 20 pounds of tomatoes, give or take. Any kind of tomatoes will work. You can use Roma tomatoes, Brandywine tomatoes, grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, anything. 20 pounds of tomatoes made about um, 8 to 9 quarts of sauce. I will put the recipe that I used down in the description box and of course you can multiply or divide the recipe to make more or less. It did take me 4 batches. Um, to roast all those tomatoes. I roasted them in four batches. Now that would depend on the size of your roasting pan, obviously. You could do that in more or less. And once I got the sauce all made and jarred, I left one inch of headspace and I did pressure can this for 20 minutes. Now I'm not going to include the actual canning process in this video. There's plenty of videos out there that show the canning process. I have a couple of videos that I can link down below in the description. Um, that show how to can, you know, in either a stovetop canner or I also have a video about the electric um, digital canner. So I canned 20 minutes um, pressure canning is what I did. And so they turned out really great. We have tried the sauce. It was delicious. We've used it in lasagna. We've used it in spaghetti and meatballs. I think we did meatball subs and it was, it was really great. Everybody is happy with this sauce. So I'd like to thank you for watching today and joining me in this video. Thanks as always. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and we love to hear your comments down below. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, give me a spaghetti emoji to let me know that you hung out with me the whole time. If you don't know how to do a spaghetti emoji, just say hi. We love hearing from you guys. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.